Hi folks, this is Jay, what you okay today? This is an article that I wrote for a magazine and I am um, giving it in lecture form and I hope it's a blessing to you. It's on the life of Nelson and um, Nelson was born on the 27th, 29th of September 1758. His father was a devoted housewife. Nelson's mother died in 1767 when he was only nine years old. As a boy, Nelson gained a liberal education by attending the high school at, at Norwich and later the North Walsham School. At the age of 12, he went to work on the ship Reasonable, a captain by his uncle Maurice Suckling. His father allowed him to start a career in the Navy so early because he had three other children to care for, which was a strain on his time and finances. It must be said, Nelson was not pushed into joining the Navy. On the contrary, seeing he lived but a short distance from the harbour, he always dreamed of one day becoming a captain. Once he had embarked on his naval career, nurtured by his uncle Suckling, he never looked back. He went from strength to strength, rising steadily through the ranks. He did have some difficulties and on one memorable occasion when he went on an expedition to the Mortine in serving in the capacity of midshipman. Together with a friend full of youthful exuberance, he went exploring the icebergs without Captain Lut uh, Lut Latwick's permission. Suddenly a polar bear appeared and Nelson was ready to fight the beast with the bat of butt of his rifle. From a distance the captain saw that the boy's lives were in peril and ordered a cannon to be fired. Fortunately, they scared the animal, oh, animal away. When the lads arrived back on the ship, Captain Ludwig gave them a piece of his mind. From the age of 14 to 25, Nelson had gained a wealth of sailing experience, having visited most parts of the world. He had already served as captain for two years before being appointed, appointed captain of the ship Borese. In this vessel, he was sent to the... Uh, Leeward Islands. Here he upset American captains by stopping them trading illegally. The Americans annexed themselves from the Crown, so were no longer regarded as British citizens. The Navigation Act stated that only the British could trade with the British colonies. The Leeward Islands being colonies of the Crown and the American trade of foreigners, Nelson rigorously enforced the law. The whole incident caused an uproar in the merchants and the American captains demanding that Nelson should be arrested for confiscating their goods. During this time at the Leeward Islands in 1787, Nelson married his, uh, Mrs. Nisbet. She was the widow of Dr. Nisbet of the island of um, Nevis. Mrs. Nisbet was an older woman and sincerely religious. She was just what Nelson needed at the time. At first the marriage was a happy one, but things started to change as Nelson was thinking that he was destined for greatness. He wanted people around him who held a similar view. Tragically, Mrs. Nelson, although a well-meaning person, failed to show appreciation of her husband's genius. It would not be long before he would look at more uh, vivacious women who would pander to his ego. On a chance meeting in Naples, Nelson encountered the Hamiltons in 1793. Immediately he fell in love with Sir Hamilton's wife, Emma. She was plum, luscious, vibrant, an intelligent woman. Having come from humble origin, she wisely married into money. Her husband was ambassador to Italy, based in Naples. The couple became close friends of King Ferdinand. Emma was accepted by the Indian aristoc Italian aristocracy and developed a reputation for political intrigue. The affair which Emma and Nelson started until his death. Emma Hamilton fulfilled these needs a man has when desired to be famous. She praised him, pampered him and made love to him as if he was a god. One of the most astonishing things about the scandal was that Nelson continued with the relationship even when his wife 
Even when his wife and Sir Hamilton knew about the affair, he eventually separated from his wife on the 3rd of January 1801. However, Nelson's career did not suffer as a result of his love affair. On the 14th of February 1797, he distinguished himself at the Battle of St. Vincent. On the 20th of February that same year, he was promoted to the rank of Rear Admiral. Age 40, he again proved himself at the Battle of the Nile on November the 6th, 1798. On this occasion, his ship smashed the French fleet in the Mediterranean. Napoleon's army in Egypt and gave England a sense of national pride. The Battle of the Nile also made the English feel guilty. They felt guilty for doubting the Admiral Nelson. Another pinnacle in Nelson's career was the Battle of Copenhagen. On April the 12th, 1801, he was now Vice Admiral. He was now Vice Admiral of the Blue. More than anyone else, Nelson knew that England was in peril. He saw the British interest threatened by an old alliance in North Europe. The alliance consisted of armed neutrality bet between Russia, Sweden, Prussia and Denmark, including Norway. This alliance not only threatened the British blockade of France, but also to cut off the vital trade with the Baltic powers, which included timber and other raw materials vital in maintaining England's supremacy at sea. To do his pit favoured an armed demonstration in the Baltic. Also, if necessary, he advocated a preemptive strike to demonstrate British naval super, super, supremacy. Nelson was in full agreement with Pitt's policy. It was for these reasons Admiral Hyde Parker, along with Nelson, as part of his part of his command staff, was sent to the Baltic with a small armada. The Battle of Copenhagen inevitably commenced. The battle being a slogging match between the British and Danish fleets, Hyde Parker would have lost the day if it was not for Nelson's daring leadership and courage. It was at this time when the Admiral called Nelson back from the heat of the battle that he chose to ignore his superior's order to continue to fight. Quote, I do not see the signal, Nelson said. It was this determination to fight that gave the Royal Navy a spectacular victory and made Nelson into an the grand culmination of Horatio Nelson's career was the Battle of Trafalgar. On the 21st of October 1805, when he was 47 years of age, the events which led up to the battle were a mixture of political and naval strategy and intrigue. Nelson's task was to pin the French fleet at Tarlon Bay. He would look at Tarlon Bay and the Spanish fleet at this base, whatever the cost, Nelson, Nelson's own Mediterranean fleet must present the, present the Spanish fleet and French Navy's combining forces. If they were allowed to do so, the combined strength would in all probability overwhelm the Royal Navy. The idea of combining Spanish and French fleets was the brainchild of European Emperor Napoleon we had to take the West Indies, a colony where much of British wealth came from. To ravage the West Indies, therefore, would destroy the British economy. Then while England lay demoralised, groaning under a recession, his Grand Fleet would smash the Royal Navy um, After that, his plan was to invade England. Napoleon had a grand army of 150,000 men on the shores of France, ready to cross the Channel. Napoleon was satisfied that his plan was foolproof. At first, it looked as if this was indeed so. The French and the Spanish fleets dogged the British blockaders and joined forces. After a cat-and-mouse chase, the two navies squared each other up for the final showdown. As Nelson saw the enemy approaching over the horizon, he had a strong premonition that he would win the battle, but die in the process. He was to prove, be proved right. And the mate was more professional that the enemy, than the enemies. From the French Admiral uh, Villevere to the sailors, the enemy was incompliant, incompetent. There was disorder and lack of communication between the high command especially. Against this clumsy giant armada, 
numbering 33, Nelson's uh, tactics was this. The enemy ships had formed in continuous line, which from the air looked like a giant chain laid across the sea. Nelson decided to break the chain, making a two-pronged attack, one on the left and the other on the right. As the enemy line broke up into little pieces, his ships would pick them off one by one, working down from either side. The, bagata the battle began after seven hours of waiting. It was a fierce fight. The noise of the cannons and the cries of the wounded were the victory was in the thick of it. Towards the conclusion, Nelson was shot in the chest, the bullet entering his spine. Immediately, the admiral was taken below deck, and in the ship's hospital there were limbs and blood everywhere. Beatty, the ship's surgeon, attended him while Hardy, his devoted officer, stood by his side. With his dying breath, he begged that the nation would financially care for Emma Hamilton and her daughter. His final words to Hardy were, I have done my duty. Soon after Nelson's death, the French ship Achilles blew up, and it marked the end of the battle, a complete victory for England. The victory at Trafalgar ranked a turning point in European history. Napoleon's armies were con uh, confined to the continental Europe. England was completely safe from any threat of invasion. With the French and Spanish fleets destroyed, British naval disputed this naval power which no other nation could match made Britain the ruler of the waves and therefore the world such independence and security was to last for 100 years the epoch making event was fin uh, finally to secure that Nelson's name would never be forgotten by his country and who could forget this one-eyed one-armed admirable admiral a paradoxical man full of contradictions, an officer who demanded absolute obedience yet throughout his life disobeyed his superiors, a man who was sincerely religious yet he broke his wife's heart despite his faults, we cannot help but admire his military genius and manly courage. This man believed he was destined for greatness and proved himself right. He is England's greatest, one of England's greatest heroes. This is a lecture by that you found that a blessing and I hope it inspires you and uh, may God bless you and uh, if you want to use this lecture uh, for whatever reason uh, to promote um, to promote um, the life of Nelson feel free to use it so thank you for listening and God bless you and take care this is Jason Burns and I uh, hope to see you around soon God bless